Okay, everyone, let's get started. So uh, in today's webinar, we're joined by Gorka from Salto Systems, um, and we're going to discuss, um, just have sort of a fireside chat conversation with Gorka around his use of, of Cockroach and uh, the application that they're, they're building at Salto Systems. So um, to start off with, my name is Daniel Holt, and I am uh, a solutions engineer, uh, part of the solutions engineering organization with Cockroach Labs. Um, Gorka, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, Daniel. I'm Gorka Archundi. I'm part of the Salto family since uh, uh, 11 years ago, something similar. And I'm, I'm the, I was, I used to be the principal architect at Salto, a senior uh, software engineer or architect. And then since the since January, I'm the engineer manager and, and tech lead for the, for the cloud services at Salto HQ. Awesome, and it's it's very good to have you with us today, um, Gorka. So we thanks for having me. Time. So yeah, let's start off with. I don't think everybody will uh, have heard of Salto, or maybe they have. But do you want to give a little bit of background on on Salto Systems, what they do, what space they're in, uh, and and a little bit about their future progressions as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are a company that was founded in in two thousand and one. That's uh, like twenty years ago. And it was the, uh, created in a flat. It's not a garage in, as in Silicon Valley, but it was a flat in, in Irun. And probably most people know us because uh, we were electronic uh, block manufacturers or devices. But now we are like uh, moving to, to being also service providers and I'm trying to, to get there in, in the cloud services uh, world and so far as a service and, and you know. We are present also in in a forty more than forty countries, and mostly we, we do as I said uh, access control uh, devices uh, software, and we are also growing um, in um, inorganically inorganically or in an inorganic way by by uh, buying companies that uh, try to fit in those areas that we are not uh, present, like ticketing and, and smart home as well. So yeah, the idea for Salto and, and us is uh, to be uh, or having a leading role in the in the replacement of mechanical keys into digital keys. And, and in order to do so, we need to not just have the hardware, but also be, be presenting those uh, cloud-based uh, uh, services and offerings. Yeah, yeah and as a company, we are operating worldwide, so those devices should be should be uh, able to work in 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 every country. It's not that easy from a hardware standpoint, but also it's not that easy from a cloud services standpoint. Yeah, no, it, I mean it's good, and I think it, you know, you've positioned yourself well to move to be more of a technology company than just an electronic ma uh, lock manufacturer. I think it's positioning you well in front of a lot of your competitors and, and the market because as you mentioned data is becoming the most important and valuable asset companies have so leveraging that within your products and your um your sort of processes will definitely uh, put you out in front awesome so that's right. that's really good background um on, on on the company so thanks thank you for that so the question that I always like to start off with is, is how did you originally hear of Cockroach Labs and, and Cockroach Database? Yeah, and I think that uh, it started because uh, I'm kind of a database freak or nerd and, and, and I follow uh, different leading people on Twitter and that was the seed. Uh, we started there and, and, and I started following the company and seeing things uh, over there. I opened that discussion internally and then evaluated. But one of the things that uh, were also important um, and also probably those uh, GIMP and Linux nerds would uh, uh, knew that uh, I knew Spencer, Spencer Kimball and, and Peter Mattis because they were the founders of, of GIMP. And I guess it was a little bit surprising that uh, those two were the ones uh, alongside with uh, Ben Donald that that uh, created or, or founded uh, Cockroach. So that was like a good starting point. And I saw them that uh, they, they, they career as well. I, I tried to, I didn't know that they were working on, on, on Google and, and they were working on Google as partner as well. So yeah, it seems like a big win. 
nerds in the core and then moving to to main more business related uh, folks so yeah yeah that's that's I mean, the main the seat let's say yeah i mean it, it definitely helps when the co-founders of a company have such a recognized background going you know working at google on spanner and adwords building products when they were in their university dorm rooms that became you know one of the, the best image editing of of things out there in terms of gimp so uh yes notor notoriety and fame becomes those who, who who go for it so no that's good um so in terms of uh, of, of the technology and the project itself um obviously you, you 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 hit a problem or you saw a problem with your existing technologies that made you look for a distributed database like cockroach do you want to give us a little bit of background of, of, of you know, why you were looking for a new platform, what issues you saw with your existing platforms and a little bit about that? Yeah, um, just to give a, a little a historical background, we were access control company. We have a software in place, but it was on-prem. And, and every client or customer that we, we were talking to uh, was asking the, the, the software was named uh, or, or its name or it was space and we they were asking to have uh, the space in the cloud so that was uh, what we tried to to achieve on and we, we started working a new access path platform in the cloud and and we saw that um we cannot just move the, the space directly into the cloud. That was the very instant. The, the people is asking uh, because the, the time to market is very valuable and we need to put something faster, but uh, we need that that would, would be a, a very early win, but not sustainable in the future. So after talking a lot internally and discussing and convincing the key uh, players or leaders here in the company, we decided that uh, we had the know-how but we need to, to start uh, moving to a new uh, kind of product that was uh, much more um, adapted to, to, to live in the cloud. So that was, uh, we, that's why we started uh, developing and, and designing from, a, from a scratch uh, a new product or a new access content. And, and, and we saw that that was a, an interesting uh, opportunity to, to, to see if uh, we can solve the core problems that uh, we knew that uh, the, the, our own uh, products already have. So having uh, the opportunity to, 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 to do in a, like a green flip project, and it was like a, a eye opening moment where we can start uh, looking at different technologies, different way of doing things and, and, and trying to, to overcome all the problems that uh, we currently were uh, patching because it's not solving in the core. We were patching some of the issues that we're finding in the wild and, and trying to solve them. So yeah, the new access control software that it was like a greenfield project, but in the core, uh, knowing the know-how that we already um, had from other projects. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's good. So again, sort of to summarize what Gorkar is saying there, I think sort of speed to market, speed of adoption, speed of development, developer velocity. So everything around the operational efficiencies that you wanted to get out of cloud was one of the reasons you, you, you were looking at moving from, you know, on-premise self-hosted uh, applications into the cloud. You considered sort of a lift and shift approach, um, but Again, as much as that would be a very short-term win to leverage some of the, uh, the features of the cloud, over the long-term, you were still very much bound by that old legacy way of doing things in terms of you know, active passive setups, in terms of resiliency features uh, and things like that. So, we'll talk about that active active feature as well. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good. So in terms of business impact, let's talk a little bit about it now in terms of business impact of that resiliency aspect, because when I think of, of you know, on-premise locks um, or things like that, I mean, if if the application is down and I don't get, you know, I can't access my my, my office, my my server rooms or, you know, any anywhere that, that lock is placed, I guess that has quite a big business impact, not only in a, sort of financial place, but also a customer satisfaction as well. Would that be accurate? Yeah, it's it's completely accurate. And there is something that is a very 
special from a, from that our products provide is that uh, they have a data car solution. The data car solution allow us to be independent of uh, being um, available in the cloud. Okay, so from an um, electronic device perspective, we can or the the customers could or keep continue opening doors, uh, even if we have an outage in the cloud. So that was an important thing for for uh, specific verticals. But uh, when it comes, for example, to hospitality, where uh, you you are a front desk employee and you need to encode a car for uh, a new uh, customer, new guest, uh, you need to to be always on. And, and that was one of the important uh, things that we considered when we started building a product in the cloud. And we also wanted to, to have the same functionality that the space was providing, but in a much simpler way. So that, that was one of the, the key things. And we tried to simplify everything in the core from a functional uh, perspective, as well as uh, from an operational perspective uh, for a company that wanted to adopt an access control software and providing them a software as a service solution that was automatically always on and without doing any IT like job or task on their own uh, is a big win for them. And at the same time, as I said, uh, as it was a Greenfield project, we, 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 we try to overcome all the solutions or all the problems that we, we had in the past and, and create a simple product. So yeah. Oh, everything matters and the operational cost for the company also to, to have a always on product without any IT task and, 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 and having a great uh, electronic logs product. Yeah, so oh, it makes, makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, a lot of those requirements, um, I'm, I guess, will resonate with a lot of the, the attendees today because they, you know, uh, gone are the days where we can afford downtime for maintenance windows and things like that. People expect 24 seven access to the data be able to use their applications all of the time, 365 days a year. Um, so that's some, some very, very good background there. So um, before we move on to sort of the challenges uh, of building new applications and, and some of the ways that you, you solve those challenges, um, can you give us a little bit about what your applications actually do? Now, I, I do know that you run multiple applications, <laughs> uh, but if you can give us sort of high level overviews of one or two of those, that would be super beneficial. Sure. The you know, simplest way it allows people to get access to doors. Okay. So in order to do so, you need to have a um, software that is supporting those devices. You need to commission them. You need to, to configure them. You need to provide them a calendar. You need to also um, uh, create users that represent the key holders, and you need to also have access rights for for them. The, the, that's the very uh, this eye view, and that requires to have a no own solution for the digital keys, uh, trying to also have that IoT fleet that will allow you providing firmware upgrades or communicating directly to the devices so that you can do check-in, check-outs for, for people. And a lot of uh, functionality that requires um, real-time connectivity and, and high availability for, for everyone. Because as I said, that example is a good one for, for hospitality and uh, someone that is encoding in, in our own device and coder, uh, a key card that uh, should be providing to a guest that is in front of you and is uh, waiting to, 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 to open their apartment or their room. So, yeah, that's uh, the long story short is um, uh, devices that support uh, you for opening doors. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really, really good uh, explanation, I think. So if I was to boil that even further up the chain, then you've basically got an identity and access management application uh, combined with a real-time metadata uh, application that links to uh, electronic locks, card devices, things like that, that will allow um, all of the things that you mentioned there. Correct, and and one important thing from our product is that uh, we can co-live with those two environments, being an offline lock or an online or an offline lock or an online lock. And that means that we can get events directly in real time from the devices and knowing what's happening there, but that's not uh, something mandatory. So uh, we can live with those installations where the doors are uh, configured uh, like 
the work on offline and data, data on cloud that I mentioned before would open your door because the data is included in your, your access rights are included in the data. So yeah, that combination makes the, the uh, life easier for the customer, a little bit more complex for us. <laughs> yes, yes, but again, complexity at our end comes with simplicity for end users. Correct. All right. Right. The common goal, which is which is nice. So, okay. So now, now let's move on to sort of um, you know, we've, we've established that you decided to build a net new application, a greenfield application, because lifting and shifting wasn't a viable option for sustainable growth going forward. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the the, the challenges you were facing with the, the existing technology uh, and and that migration, and maybe what made you think of of, of moving to a greenfield uh, application? Yeah, most of the times is, um, as I said, having a highly available solution. And in order to, to, to do so, you need to solve uh, core uh, problems that this kind of softwares or, or products has, like migration, upgrades. And, and, and if you solve those, for example, you get, uh, as I said, the active active or developer experience for everyone, right? Because in the migrations and the and the associated downtime that other uh, database solutions uh, have, we cannot accommodate that in in our twenty four seven solution. And we were looking uh, for a database that uh, was easy to operate, yes, but at the same time easy to migrate and have those day two operations. Uh, always easy to deal with. And the same time, the, the same happens with the upgrades of the versions uh, as well. Postgres, for example, uh, does a really good job and when it comes to the minor versions, but it's not that easy for major, major ones. You need to, to decide how to want to deal with the versions. Uh, if you want to point to the failover, then you move that complexity to the developer and that makes at the end of the day the developer experience much harder. So it's like uh, you start uh, uh, looking at the different bumps on the road that you found and try to overcome them, but uh, they weren't uh, solved in the core. So uh, the active active uh, system is, is is the same in this case because if you have a highly available solution like the approach is providing, and uh, even in different regions you will be able to abstract the developer from the infrastructure and you can um, keep or continue the pace on each side independently, completely decoupled, and the, the developer doesn't care if uh, the infrastructure guy is uh, upgrading the, the database or not. So that's a really important thing for us and that makes the whole solution active active. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, again, a really, really, really good overview there. So if we if we start to break down some of those points, you mentioned things like migrations and, and, and you know, with your existing applications, you had to take applications down to do things like schema changes, um, All right. which is very interesting because when people think of survivability and availability, they normally think immediately of things like disaster recovery, high availability. What they don't think of is the smaller things that you have to take your database or application down for in order to make improvements to that application, you know, things like schema changing. So with the technologies you were using, again, that was a big problem because there was downtime involved every time an, an application got rolled out. Um, you were looking for a database platform that would allow you to do things like online schema changes um, without having to take applications down. Um, things like that would that be accurate representation of, of that yeah perfect perfectly accurate and and there are even developers that don't think that uh, changing something that doesn't seem very relevant would make your whole uh, system down so yeah i mean this makes the for us the most important thing was to to couple completely the developer from knowing and uh, how the database is going to work. Yeah, it's Postgres, everything works, at least uh, in, a, in a very big percentage of features set that the Postgres was providing, but it just works. So that, that was the, the idea and that is what uh, Postgres is providing. That is one of the big reasons that we, we also decided to, to choose Postgres. 
No, again, yeah, very, very glad you did for a start. <laughs> but um, no, it, it makes a lot of sense. And if we continue that on, you know, things like um, taking infrastructure down, because you also mentioned that you want to get away from managing infrastructure, you know, upgrading infrastructure, upgrading the database engines, taking the application down when the upgrades need to be done. So uh, it's it's probably a good um, point here to, to tie this in with developer experience as well, because that was a big focus of you guys. You, you just wanted application developers to focus on the applications. You didn't want them to, to worry about the infrastructure, the database, anything like that. It's just literally develop the application to solve a business problem. And I guess it's sort of one of the reasons that you picked our fully managed hosted solution, Cockroach Cloud, was, was those very reasons. Um, is, again, is that accurate or? Yeah, we were tempted to, to manage by ourselves, but at the end of the day, it's, um... We are not database uh, administrators. We are uh, value builders, let's say, or, or, or developers that tries to solve business problems. And we want to focus our effort on, on that. And, and that's why we, we, we started by, by managing Cockroach by ourselves with licenses that we, we bought from you. And we saw that even if the management wasn't that hard, because uh, as I said, it's easy to upgrade. It's just a matter of clicking uh, or changing a version and it seems to everything uh, work uh, without doing nothing. But uh, we felt like uh, we weren't doing the right thing and uh, that the people wants to, to keep doing um, feature sets that would be brought to, to our customers instead of uh, staying down there in the database administration phase. So that's why we, we directly moved to, to the management or dedicated service. Yeah, which again is, is uh, again, a lot of the reasons people move to those fully managed platform as a service or database as a service platforms is, is very much for those reasons to simplify the stack to make the developer experience far better in terms of developer velocity, which then is also making developers far more productive in, in making the applications better as well. Um, it also you know, reduces the total cost of ownership um, by a lot, because again, all the infrastructure, everything is managed by people who are building the products, who know it very, very well, which allows you to focus mm -hmm. on your, your, your business value. So that's, that, that, that's great, that's awesome. So um, we are also taking a close look to approach serverless because that would make probably our lives much easier as well. There are some some features that we are waiting, but apart from that, uh, probably we are going to to, to uh, move to the serverless in the future. Could be short or mid term. <laughs> no, that's definitely good to know. Um, and again, serverless is another fully managed system, really. Um, so you get all the same benefits at a, a consumption based model then instead. So let's let's move on now and let's talk a little bit about the sort of um, technology solution that you designed, so your, your net new application. And I know you've got a couple of slides that you can share as well, so feel free to, to, to do that. But do you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, how you designed the application um, in terms of the, the business and then also obviously the, the backend database as well? Okay, yeah, we try to follow the same principles that uh, we, we make for the product itself. And just to keep everything as simple as possible. And at the same time to, to, to fix all the complexities um, in an eventual consistent way in some cases. But um, we want to keep things simple. And the, the developer will appreciate it. And, and the operations uh, people will also appreciate it. Everyone likes to understand in a very simple way that everything um, behaves in the same way, independently if it's a product A or product B. So our schema more or less is always have an API and that API will hit directly to, to, to the database. And those um, methods that could get complicated and we saw that we don't need to make them the whole path, uh, we move to what we call internally here processors. Those processors are uh, just um, listeners to events that happen in the in the change in data capture link. So that's always the same schema. Even the webhooks that we send to the outside, 
happens in a virtual consistent uh, fashion and we send them uh, by receiving from a date uh, change data captcha uh, link so the schema is always the same you have an api that api hits the application that application is highly available and it's a stateless uh, that uh, hits uh, the the um, database that it's uh, close to, to to them and once that something happens uh, in the back so by following the outbox pattern we we push the information to the other side by using the the change data capture and that change data capture by receiving the events we we replicate or or move information around uh, by using that eventual consistent uh, link let's say i have uh, some links I, probably i already explained everything but <laughs> here it is let me one second so while goker is bringing uh, the, the slides up there um i think so the, what, what the application does is it uses CockroachDB as the persistent store to ensure consistency of your IAM solution to make sure that the right users get the right roles in a very consistent manner. Uh, and then CockroachDB has a, a change data capture feature, which allows then for, for asynchronous movement of data to, to stream downstream into other APIs or other, other downstream processing engines that will allow you to move that data very efficiently. Too. Correct, and this is more or less what I have explained. We have an API, an API that it's a multi-regional database, and that CDC that you are mentioning right now, it's uh, something that happens in the in the backside, and, and it's more something. MySQL and, and and Postgres support somehow this, but it's very clunky. Let's say the bin log uh, attaching to a bin log seems like very very raw. And this is the MySQL case, and and in the uh, for for uh, Postgres, it was if I'm not mistaken, it was like creating another or or behaving you as uh, you were a real replica, so that you receive those uh, changes as well. So knowing that Cockroach was supporting this in the core uh, really helped, and and we we were using this from the very beginning. So this is the schema. As I said, we are uh, pushing information to those other APIs replicating by using processors. And the higher uh, level overview of the cluster and the different regions, this is what we what we are doing. We have one API, that API is in different regions directly, that global load balancer is provided by Google, that will automatically uh, redirect uh, the request depending on where you are. So you, you will get to the closest uh, place a uh, region uh, and once that it gets to the api that is always touching to the same region in, in cockroach okay that is something that the responsibility for the infrastructure people where to point is something that the developer shouldn't care about and this is the the yeah, cluster I mean, that we currently have this this is a good diagram to 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 explain the complexities of the infrastructure of running distributed systems because if you had to set this up you have to set up all of the networking yourself you have to set up you know all of the nodes manage all the patching of all those nodes you have to set up the load balancers per region you have to set up the ap so as you can see there's a lot that goes into developing distributed applications and and this is displayed well here by, by Gorka. So ultimately what this is showing is, is, is you've got sort of three cockroach nodes in each region um, and you're spreading your data across all of those regions for the ultimate resiliency and survivability uh, purposes. Correct, and that, that uh, bottom part of the diagram is completely tilted or managed by, by you by using a cockroach dedicated, but I will do online at least the complexity of the different, you know, how to call diamond, diamond or whatever, Links that are there, but there are lots of uh, edges and us uh, connecting the different nodes, and that's quite complicated. To not just because the product is complicated, because the architect, the, the infrastructure itself, it's uh, complicated uh, when you want to when you want to deal with it. So yeah, a cockroach uh, dedicated abstract everything um, from the complexity of of dealing by ourselves. Yeah. And the imagine that we want to survive to the different uh, region uh, completely uh, outages. So 
the survivability goals that you have implemented or abstracted um, help us to always be on. So that is something that I mentioned before. By imagine that, for example, Google had a problem in each service in, in the whole region, and the cockroach cluster would uh, continue working. And that is something very important because we have uh, RTOs that are uh, really, really hard to achieve, like 15 minutes and or even less. So yeah, we need to be prepared in a, from a technical or, or practice standpoint. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really good point. So what this in complete infrastructure will give you is different levels of survivability. Because you have three nodes in each of the regions, what you can accommodate is a, 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 a node loss in either each of the regions. So for example, if you take Frankfurt Day and you lose a single node, maybe an availability zone goes down, um, then you can still survive that with no problem at all. On top of that, if the entire Frankfurt region goes down, you can still survive that because you have two copies of your data in the other two regions. So it does give you that really high level of availability uh, and survivability that, that, that you know, you, you're going to need when running, running multi-region um, workloads. Correct. Awesome. Um, okay. So, um, I mean, we've mentioned, you know, how it's architected. Um, when, when you first dropped and designed this application, how successful did you, did, did you find it? you know, all the way from the application through to the database back end. Yeah, it was in, uh, as we were early adopters, um, it was more like um, the vision we had uh, within the product. We know that in the core, everything was uh, implemented in the right way. Uh, we were following very close because the, the code is also available out there in, in GitHub. So. And we were we were following closely how uh, things were uh, being built, and it was kind of uh, expectation on where could um, approach uh, get into. So we started by very, being the early adopters, and there were lots of things that weren't solved yet. But uh, we knew that uh, the, the technology would be. Uh, fixing all of those in the near future because the core was built uh, in the right way. So the data locality was uh, the first one that um, we had lots of legal requirements of uh, placing information in, depending on which kind of customers we were supporting. For example, if the US uh, uh, people and the California Act uh, would require to uh, be not having cross uh, worldwide uh, traffic uh, without having the control at least the data locality or CC to be in a specific place and the GDPR thing as well. So the data locality was one of the important things that Cockroach was uh, uh, providing as well as the one that I mentioned before, survivability goals that you made that very, very good job abstracting us from those uh, high complexity terms like uh, tones, uh, ranges, and uh, leaseholders, and so on. So directly having, this is what I wanted to achieve, uh, being able to survive to a region, that is a really, really good feature, as well as uh, you have you started supporting, and as you progressed, like JSON and CDC and TTL in this last, uh, last uh, release. So yeah, we yeah. started with expectation and hope, and we saw that uh, our bet was a good one. We weren't the investors. We, we <laughs> that that wasn't a, a, a good uh, choice. We did we need to put some money from the early uh, being the early adopters. But <laughs> yeah, apart from that, we did a good bet. It's a good point, Goka. I mean, you know, every technology advances. Um, there there is a need to work with a technology that is completely perfect. But having the ability to influence the roadmaps, and uh, you were a little bit humble there, but you guys at, at Salto Systems really did help us develop a lot of more of the advanced features around the CDC support, the TTL support, um, and even the geo partitioning. So um, as Gorka mentioned, some of the really powerful features of CockroachDB that will help you um, sort of not only the performance aspect, but help you meet with those data governance and data compliance laws. Uh, are called geo partitioning. That used to be very, very fiddly and, and very complicated to set up um, in the past. 
but we work with the guys at Salter Systems to really help simplify a lot of that. So we created an abstraction layer on top of that, which makes it very, very easy to just say, I want to survive a, you know, an availability zone outage, or I want to survive a, a complete regional outages with just a very couple of simple SQL commands. So um, yeah, uh, a lot of useful information there about you know, why, why Salter Systems was so successful in, 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 in deploying their new applications. So after the successful sort of implementation of that first uh, application, Gorka, did that lead you on to maybe thinking about using Cockroach for, for even more applications within, within Salter? Yeah, definitely. The ones that we we started developing for that access control system, we decided that everything was performing as we we thought, and, and as having empirical numbers that everything was behaving in a correct way, we decided to to start working in other products that we have the privilege to start partnering with with Apple, and we. Because of a new technology, the technology that we were they were developing, we have the opportunity to partner with them and work in a very very critical uh, product, and it was it was very very exciting, but at the same time very very scary because uh, we know that we are uh, like ants comparing with with uh, with Apple, and and they had a lot of probably we didn't knew but they, they, we, they probably had a lot of experience partnering with companies. And probably there was uh, the, there were procedures that uh, would be hard to achieve from our side. So uh, that was the case <laughs> when we started working with them. The due diligence that they they asked us to comply was really really hard to achieve. And one of the uh, important uh, notes there or, or key key components uh, was the the database or the performance testing the in the production readiness uh, plan, let's say. So that uh, performance was um, key because uh, as you know, they have very specific times and during the year where uh, they they release like iOS or even new hardware, like a new uh, iPhone versions that once they release and once they have um, a specific feature sets, they spike in the quantity of requests that uh, Apple, but at the same time, the different partners that are supporting a specific feature for them should be supported because we are sucking um, behind Apple, but we were there as well. So uh, we need to have that uh, approach uh, supporting that performance test and it behaved very, really, very really well. Uh, we even didn't do any performance fine tanning, and that was a really important thing for us because, as I said, we are not that database administrators, we are value creators, as I would like to, to say here. Uh, and it, it just worked. So that was a really, really important achievement for us. No, and uh, I mean, it's it, it's impressive. I think we all know Apple are very much a technology forward company. So they, they, they sometimes like years ahead in terms of what they develop in terms of the rest of the technology ecosystems that are out there. So, you know, with you guys having the ability to integrate your technologies and your applications directly with Apple's applications, um, had, to your point, had a very strict set of requirements that came along with it around both the performance characteristics of the database, but also the... Um, the survivability aspect as well because that that's always going to be core when you're working with somebody like apple um there so yeah probably it wasn't um like five years ago but now you don't even see that banner in the different services where they say you are going to see a downtime from 10 to, to 12 uh, or something similar that is gonna end Everyone wants to have a uh, twenty-four-seven services and high, have everything highly available. In order to do so, you need to have uh, services under the hood or, or components under the hood that is uh, supporting those use cases. Yeah, and and again, you made a really good point there about you know the hardware refreshes and the iOS updates that Apple actually put out there. You see massive spikes in in traffic during those periods. Um, so having a database that is very, very easy to scale as well. You know, we haven't talked too much about scale in this, this webinar, but it is extremely easy to scale um, a database like Cockroach by just simply adding more nodes, which will give you more capacity 
uh, for, for both sort of data, but also more capacity for throughput in terms of those performance spikes as well. Correct. It's a, it's an active active solution, and the developer doesn't care when where the node is hitting, and it's just dropping more nodes and and providing more more requests per second uh, rates. Awesome. No, that's that's great. That's great. So um, yeah, it's been a really 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 good webinar so far. Um, I like to sort of finish up the the webinar with asking a, a very sort of out of the box question: there is, what advice would you have for anybody else looking uh, at a distributed database like Cockroach or developing distributed applications? Um, what advice would you have uh, to those people who are looking at, at technologies like this? And I you you asked me several times this, not just for this webinar, but also all the time. So um, the, the advice is all the same: is try it. Uh, it just work. It just works because and um, yeah, the, when we started, probably uh, there were some points that you should be caring about because you know that uh, that is not gonna work out of the box. But and you get to a point where now the cockroach the database is working out of the box with. Uh, every feature set that you can you can imagine even the ttl thing is one key component and uh, you released in the last uh, last version so everything that you can think of and that tries to uh, solve complexities that uh, applications uh, deal with in a daily basis are uh, in a 99 percent solved so and probably you we are not going to get that 100% compatibility in the wire protocol with Postgres, but I don't think that that is a, a blocker for uh, 99% of applications. So the advice, yeah, just try it and it just works and, and, and tell the experience. Yeah, I think that I think that is great advice, and 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 we've made it as easy as possible for people to just try it. You know, um, in terms of how you 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 want to try it, you can always download Cockroach DB, install it on your laptop, have a play around with it. You know, you've got the serverless offering now, which we give you free up to five gigabytes worth of data. So if you just want to get your feet wet with with Cockroach and a very easy way of of getting started, that is definitely something that I would recommend. Or if you want to try the, the hosted solution, the fully managed solution that, that Gorka mentioned throughout this, this webinar, you can get a 30 day free trial of that as well um, via the, the Cockroach website. So super easy to get started. But again, don't be frightened to try, I think is the, is the ultimate message there. You know, try, trying, uh, moving to a distributed database doesn't have to be difficult. Uh, especially with pop with, with cockroach db because we're postgres wire compatible which means you know any programming language orm with a postgres compatible driver just hook it up give it a go give it a try we're not saying that it's going to be perfect 100 of the time but i think you'll be surprised with how simple it is to get an application up and running on top of cockroach yeah one of the things that i wanted to mention also because this is something that i also drop an email to likes me several uh, uh, even years ago <laughs> but i said that uh, the technology is there and it's going to solve lots of problems but it's also important when you are a company that is growing fast and it's um, kind of a big company like we are like one uh, one and a half thousand people right now at Salto and we can consider ourselves as a, a kind of a big company and it's important the culture uh, behind it or inside the company and this is something that we value for ourselves but also for our partners and whenever we work with a company we just uh, try to investigate in different areas or angles how how they work between uh, them and this is something that we value from you as a company because uh, i know if it's because of a nerd nature of spencer and ben and, and peter but um, i think that it's uh, very very important to have uh, that uh, people happy by having a very open-minded culture into the company and I felt with a different uh, representative that I have been talking uh, during this year in Cockroach, yeah, starting with you, Daniel, 
as well with Max, uh, with Ben, with Laxmi, with uh, Ben yeah. Donnell as well. Oh so, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's very, very important in order to get to a successful point as a company and, and as a product as well. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, whenever we're working with people, we see it more as a partnership than anything else, you know, and having the ability to partner with our customers and have the customers influence our roadmap and our features and things like that is super important because ultimately you are the guys that are using the product and you are the, the guys, you know, the customers are the people that should be influencing the roadmap because we need to be delivering what you guys are wanting out of the database platform. So that, that is that is really, really good feedback there, Gorka. So definitely thank you for that. Um, so lastly, I mean, I like to leave the, the last couple of minutes or so for you to do a little bit of promotion about Salto. I do know you guys are hiring. So if you want to just plug a little Salto a little bit and, uh, you know, feel free to use this last couple of minutes to, 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 to tell the audience a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Uh, I already explained what we do, what uh, where we are, even uh, what products we are building up, and how uh, we decided to use Cockroach in the different mission critical workloads as well. But um, we are a very, very we started being, as I said, in a flat in Irun, a very, very small company, but we grew very, very fast, and now we are like I said, uh, when I get into the company, I was the uh, 100 uh, employee and now we are one and a half thousand so uh, the company in 10 years grew a lot grew a lot and we we plan to do the same for the next year so um the i guess i, I don't know i have the exact numbers but we are like 90 or something in uh, headquarters for the engineers and in a group level we are like uh, 300 people, uh, just engineers. So imagine that the percentage of research and development we have in the company, and and that is not going that is not going to stop. We are going to grow much more because we have a lot of ambitions and we are targeting different uh, verticals. Uh, exciting moments for for Salto. And, and that's why everyone that wants to join in our company, in our department, in our uh, cloud uh, team, so uh, drop me an email, the email will be there, or even go to the corporate web and yeah, Salt is hiring, always hiring. Awesome, yeah. So any, uh, any of you on the call who is interested in a, in a new job, obviously take a look at the Salt website. Get in contact with Gorka. It's a super company to go work for. Um, really, really, really forward-thinking tech company. So Thank you. Very, very good for the engineers. Awesome. Oh, well, that, that will do it for today's webinar, guys. Um, I'd like to thank Gorka and all of the attendees for joining today. Um, there will be a recording of the webinar distributed after uh, the webinar, so feel free to go back and, uh, and, uh, and review this or share it with any of the colleagues that you think would be beneficial. But yeah, um, thank you all very much for joining and we will catch you on the next webinar.